I absolutely love collaboration projects. Before I got into miniatures, I was a graphic designer. And honestly, I kind of miss being in that creative environment. Just going into brainstorming meetings, which, by the way, are the only fun meetings in my opinion. But being able to bounce ideas off your fellow designers, which everyone bringing their own unique mindset to come up with this overall creative idea for something is just... I love it. (laughs) I am fueled so much by my friends, especially ones from different artistic backgrounds. And that is why I like to surround myself with people who inspire me. So when I got a message from Witness My Minis asking me if I would like to do a collaboration project, I was like, Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yup. I often make bases or little dioramas without having any models in mind. The building process alone is sometimes more enjoyable for me. But I wanted to give Peter a model to work with, so I dug through my pile of potential to look for something that sparked joy. I ended up finding two models I liked, which gave me the idea of having them interact together somehow. I peeked through my bits box, grabbed some basic material, and started to create my little diorama. The models I ended up picking are a legendary rogue and a pathfinder psychic, both from Reaper Miniatures. I like the character poses, especially the rogues. Since the psychic is floating, I decided to have her on higher ground, with the rogue below kind of taunting her, as if he was beckoning her to come down to him. When I have leftover epoxy, I like to make stones or bricks out of it. So I'm going to use these bricks to build up a broken wall for her to be standing on. I use some wooden craft sticks to build a fence off of the wall. Laying out the scene piece by piece. When building dioramas, I like to start with the largest focal point first and work my way down from there. It's easier to fill in the small areas than make room for the big parts. I have these fake decor plants that I like to cut up to use as trees and bushes. If you trim and clean them off, they don't actually look that bad. Normally, I spruce them up with flocking, but since I'm not painting this piece, we'll see how it goes later on. I ripped up some dried pieces of air dry clay so I could put the plants in there for some support. I added some chopped up bits for texture on the base, but I ended up changing my mind and covering most of this up later on, so this step was kind of unnecessary. The rogue has a stone pattern at his base, so I decided to build off of that and make a stone pathway. I used green stuff for this, and it was the most time-consuming part, playing with it just to get it right. While that was drying, I covered the ground and filled in all the gaps with the earth texture paint, which I might be slightly addicted to using this stuff lately, but it works really well. Oh, I forgot to mention that during this entire process, Peter has no idea what I'm making. Until he opens that box, he is in the complete dark. I didn't tell him about this piece at all, my thoughts behind it, nada. Until he's watching this video right now, he has no idea. Since the psychic is on top of the wall, I decided I should pin her because I didn't want her to break off in transit. Unfortunately, I thought I had her flush when I glued her down, but I didn't. Such a silly mistake. Test fit things before you glue them. Time to pivot. So I had to think how to fix it. The glue was holding really well, so I decided not to rip her off and try again. I could bring the green stuff out and sculpt her cloak to flow down over the bricks, but... Honestly, I wasn't in the mood to do that. Time for plan C? 
I decided to make a moss texture to fill in the gap. I mixed up some grass flocking, PVA glue, and craft paint until I liked the look of it and slapped it on there. Adding some to the ground as well. And for some reason, I decided to put it on the tree. I guess at the time, I was thinking it would help spruce up the tree now instead of having Peter do it later. I don't know. I'll be honest, I regretted doing this. But I was in too deep and I just kept going, hoping it would turn out okay. I'm sorry, Peter. I hope it was not a pain to paint. Sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. There are bases that look great with everything in the kitchen sink thrown in it, and some that benefit a lot from minimalism. And I'm still learning on when to show some restraint. To wrap this one up, I needed to add one more thing. If I can, I like to sneak little animals into my pieces for fun. I'm adding a tiny hedgehog into the background. I wonder what Peter will think of that. And it's all done. All that's left is to prime it. I'm calling this piece a tale of perception. I didn't tell Peter the title either because I didn't want it to influence how he would see this piece. I wanted him to look at it with fresh eyes and follow his own vision, which is why I decided against Zenithal highlighting it. I didn't want to dictate the light source and wanted to leave as much up to his interpretation as I could. Will Peter see the story I laid out of a scoundrel and a lady that sees through his tricks? Or will he see something completely different? Like a page from a book, I've written a small narrative. A scene is set, the curtain has risen, and now it is time for Peter to paint the picture and bring the story to life. This was a fun build, but it's even more exciting to give it to somebody and see what they do with it. I encourage everyone to do a collaboration project. I said make fun things, now make fun things with your friends. Not only am I shipping this diorama to Peter, but I'm also shipping a emotional gift that's been long overdue. Whew. A little backstory. At the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, Witness My Minis was holding a painting competition called Butterfly for Hana. And I was really moved by this, not only because it was to remember his sister by and in support of mental health, but also because butterflies hold a special meaning for me too. Emotional warning. January is a hard month for me. It is the anniversary of my mom's passing. And my mom always supported my art since I was a little kid. Her first tattoo was of a butterfly that I drew and she got it done over her heart. So butterflies will always remind me of her. I created a piece not only to support this event, but also to help me heal. This was the piece I created for Butterfly for Hana. It was meant to be a storybook come to life, a whimsical creation and nod to a child's imagination. I wanted to give this to Peter and his family, so I sent it to him last year. But unfortunately, that turned into a nightmare. Swedish Customs held on to the package for over a month. We both tried to get a hold of them to get the package delivered, but they said the package was going to get returned. Or so we thought. Months would keep going by, and we started to lose hope that this package would ever arrive. And then a freaking Christmas miracle. It was returned back to me in December. Mostly intact, but I packed it up with the diorama and sent it on its journey over 4,000 miles across the ocean <sighs> with fingers crossed that it makes it there because the last time was an emotional roller coaster. So here's hoping that it makes it from the Midwest all the way to Sweden. And I have an update on that. It made it! Yes! <laughs> Peter got the package, and he sent me a video of him opening it, which I'm going to share with you right now. Okay, here it is. 
Let's open it up. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. First of all, she sent me her. God, it's so beautiful. Damn, it's beautiful. This is the piece that she made um, for Butterfly for Hannah. And she sent it to me. Finally got it. Thank you, Sambies. Here we go. This is the piece. This is the piece that she sculpted for me to paint. Okay? Okay, it's, it's big. Let's get rid of this. Damn, girl. It's so cool. It's a small diorama. Um, <laughs> okay. Wow. My mind is racing right now about what to do with it. This is gonna be fun. I can't thank you enough for the book. Yeah, I finally got here. I'm so thankful for it. And as for the diorama, let's uh, let's see where it takes us. So looking forward to see the video also and seeing how you made it, as well as getting started on painting it. Okay, Peter out, bye bye. To see more of his reaction and how he painted it, I'm gonna put his video, which is up right now, which I haven't even seen yet, in the link below. Go watch it right now. Well, after this video, not now now. Is it now now or then then? <laughs> and as always, I love your face. Be excellent to yourselves and others. Go make fun things and well, maybe like and subscribe as it helps inspire me to keep making future content. Happy painting.